Okay, so now let us look at ammonia with four hybrids. How did we decide we needed four hybrid orbitals? Well, the nitrogen is attached to three hydrogens. That requires at least three hybrids. And then we said, let's go ahead and give that lone pair a hybrid also. So that would be four hybrid orbitals. So starting out, our nitrogen has an S, PX, PY, and PZ. How can we get four hybrids? Well, we're going to mix the S with all three of the other P orbitals. And in doing so, we will get four new hybrids. Each hybrid is one part S and three part P. They are SP3 hybrids. We have no leftover P orbitals to worry about. So for SP3 hybridization, any SP3 hybridized atom, not just ammonia, our bond angle is approximately 109. That was true for our sp3 hybridized methane. It's going to be true for our sp3 hybridized um, ammonia as well. Now, the geom for the geometry, I'm going to go back to our picture we do drew for methane. So we tried to draw the four hydrogens equally spaced in three dimensions about the carbon. What? Why in three dimensions? Well, to make these sp3 hybrids, we we have at our disposal, x-axis character, y-axis, and z-axis. So these can be oriented in all three um, dimensions of space along all three axes. Note the previous example for ammonia being sp2, we only used xy, and so therefore our hybrids had to sit within a plane, the x, specifically the xy plane. So we said this is tetrahedral for methane. Ammonia is not methane, but I, I'm, I'm going to use um, methane as our starting point. So in place of the, the carbon, I'm going to write the nitrogen. Let's fill in three of these hydrogens in exactly the same way we drew them with methane. And then what do we do with a lone pair? Let's replace one of the CHs with a lobe, and this, that's, our, that's one of our sp3 hybrids. And inside that orbital, an orbital can hold two electrons, so we'll put our two electrons, our lone pair electrons. So this is a way to represent ammonia as an sp3 hybridized atom. Now, what is the geometry? Well, the nitrogen has three groups attached to it, so it's, it's not tetrahedral. It doesn't have four. It's going to be trigonal, like we saw on the last one the sp2 hybridized nitrogen. Now it's sp3, it's still trigonal, but these three hydrogens no longer occupy a plane with the nitrogen. They're kind of low beneath that nitrogen. So it's actually trigonal pyramidal instead of being tetrahedral because we don't count the lone pair when we discuss geometries. Now there are other ways that we could draw this structure. Um, we could replace the other hydrogens with a lone pair I think these are going to look a little awkward. They're not my favorite way to draw it, but we could do something like that. That's completely fair to do. We could even replace one of these hydrogens that's sticking above or below the plane with the lone pair. And in fact, to do that, I'm going to replace the one that's above the plane. I'm going to try to make it a little darker to show that it's sticking out above the plane. All these are completely fair pictures. My personal favorite, if I were drawing this, would be this structure. But, but these are all correct structures. Um, now, which one of these is correct? In, in, this in this page, we said it's going to be sp3. In the previous video, we said we could think of it as sp2. Which one's correct? Well, the experimental bond angle is observed to be approximately 107 degrees. On the previous clip, we said if it's sp2, it's 120. And if it's sp3, it'll be about 109. The experimental value is much closer to 109. Therefore, ex the experimental data is much more consistent with ammonia having 
SP3 hybridization. And so that's what people will say. Ammonia is an SP3 hybridized nitrogen atom. And we know that because the experimental data backs it up. So we have two options, but one fits the experimental data.